Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday on a Thursday. Um, have a event tomorrow, so well, I'll be traveling tomorrow. So anyway, I uh, wanted to just check back in to do this 30 Questions Thursday, just to share a little bit more about the updates on the Quantum Heart Coil Pendant. Um, so that's what we're going to do here today besides just taking our questions. We don't have any questions online today. So if you are here live and you have questions, you're welcome to drop them in the questions tab. Otherwise, feel free to join us on chat here. And if you are watching on YouTube, the recording, you're welcome to go to the newsletter um, to Twisted Sage page where you can sign up for the newsletter which will let you join us here live when we do the events. So anyway, aloha from Hawaii, California, Oklahoma. I know we got peeps from all over the planet here. And thank you all for being here today. Um, so we are going to drop into the heart space and if we have questions we'll go there otherwise we'll talk about the new coil pendant all right so going into the heart space we do with a simple three breaths which we call the trinity breath connecting to the earth connecting to creation and becoming more of you grounded in in the heart so here we go close our eyes if you wish Putting your attention to your physical heart, that place where we find our light, our soul's fire, and just using your imagination and intentions of connecting heart to heart with the earth, breathing in that light, that love, that support of the earth, up through the feet and into the heart. Next, we connect heart to heart with creation, however you see that source soul creator god we breathe in that light of creation into the heart the third breath we breathe in the energy of the earth the energy of creation we bring them both together with you oh, and that moves you from the head into the heart and you are grounded and connected perfect place to be for all the creation and decisions and everything you do in your life all right so <clears throat> we'll go ahead and jump over and start talking about the update on the quantum heart coils um we talked about we introduced the quantum heart coils last week during the 50 questions friday um here in february now the quantum heart coils um they're pretty phenomenal. They are they are different than the wisdom wands, though the quantum heart coils were born out of the wisdom wands because the wisdom wands were designed to one to run energy and two to hold a space. And then we added more to the wisdom wands at that time, such as being able to anchor the columns of light, just like you would with the golden fire and light wands. And then once we made the mini of these, the, the micro pendant wands, we replaced the quantum healer with the small version of the wisdom wand, the, the quantum wisdom. That particular one then started to carry the energy of the quantum healer. So then we put the energy of the quantum healer also into the wisdom wand. So the wisdom wand went through quite a few transformations itself. But the the field that the wisdom wand holds, which is it's to me it presents as like this reddish, orangish, brownish, fibrous cocoon that comes around you and and your heart, your, that sacred space of the heart, and and you as as the human however you see this cocoon. But what's so special about this cocoon is it's not like it's, um, you know, like, like bubbles. We used to put bubbles around people and things and us. And at one point in time, you know, bubbles were great because they offer a protective field. 
So this cocoon isn't like a bubble where we're trying to stop anything from coming in. This cocoon is more, it acts more like a container, a space holder and a filter that as you start to within this space, when you're in that cocoon space, that that wisdom wand first was producing, it would hold such a bright light, your light within, and it was a transformative space. This is where we did a lot of that work that I talk about how we can repattern consciousness to change. Well, we use consciousness to repattern energy. Everything is energy, so we make changes in energy with consciousness. That's creation. Um, <clears throat> and we, we all do this. We, we all create all the time. It's just that we've usually been creating from the head with all the drama, trauma, the soul level structures of belief systems, the, the, the limitations, all of that. That's where we've been creating. And we are creators and we create all the time. But right now, as everything is shifting and changing, that we are able to be in the heart space and we are able to create from there. When we create from the heart versus the head, creation takes on a whole different flavor. Um, <clears throat> and it's not based, it's based on consciousness. So when we have this cocoon space around the heart and our consciousness comes in, this is our higher self. The consciousness is not the emotions, the thoughts, the things like that. It's not the human stuff. This is the I am, um, your consciousness. So as you bring in more of your consciousness <clears throat> within this space, you are able to more repattern the energy around you. So as I've talked about with the wisdom wand before, where it creates that cocoon space around you, and that I've said, you know, throughout the times that I have not ever met a situation that I have not been able to change or change my reaction and awareness to. All you do is you go into the heart space, you imagine that cocoon around you, you put your awareness onto something, but without your judgment, without trying to fix it, you're simply flowing that divine light, that divine awareness, your light to that situation. And it repatterns it, it changes it. I've not met a thing that I could not change my perception and how I work with that situation. That is what I felt was the most powerful thing with the wisdom wand, besides being able to run energy and anchor the columns of light and all that great stuff. The component that I liked most about the wisdom wand was that cocoon space. So during those three weeks that I was, and I'm sorry if, if this is um, repetitive because this is just basically the story of the, the quantum, um, the quantum heart <clears throat> coil in that um, when this was first starting to be, um envisioned that's really what i wanted it for was to hold that cocoon space but to expand on that and so that's what we did was was this coil pendant um in that cocoon space for the three weeks that i had covid that i sat at home um that's what i did was i worked on the soul aspects and as i've talked about in our last 50 questions friday how huge the soul aspects affect people um Soul aspects is kind of a generic term, but it covers all of those things that are us. It's an aspect of the soul. It is a soul's creation. Um, and a soul aspect can be, um, you know, for some examples, when you go, you take a shower, you, you, you do your thing and you don't even think about it. It's just kind of like an autopilot thing. That is an aspect of you that comes in to do that. Driving a car. You get in, you don't think about driving your car. You get in, you just drive. It, it, is, it is a part of you. It is an aspect, a conscious part of you that comes in and does that work. Doing dishes, um, you know, doing your books, your work, whatever it is that you usually do something repetitive. Um, you know, like, like for me, I used to always run energy into my food and get gratitude for it and watch it go all the way back to its original space. Or like when I twist the copper wire, I, I, I always sat there and I would run the energy into the copper. I would give the gratitude for it. I would go back through time, 
clear that copper all the way to when it was in the earth before it's even harvested, all the way through the process to here. So those are things that I would used to do all the time, but they incorporated into my field. They became a part of me, an aspect of me that that just occurs as I step in. Um, so like with Brenda, you know, I have talked about Brenda before, like if I get a rib out and I text her, she doesn't even read the text, but I can feel her pushing my rib back into place. That is an aspect of her. Her is the human, the conscious right here now moment aspect, did not read my text, did not have the intentions of doing that work. It was that healer aspect of her. <clears throat> so that leads us into, so um, for the aspects, that is a huge thing that these coil pendants are doing. For me, it was, it was a giant leap because before I always had all of my aspects and it was just, I never knew how loud it was. I never knew how loud it was until it was quiet. That integrating the aspects, integrating the aspects with the aspects that can come from lifetime so they can carry traumas. You know, and I told you guys too about the aspect that I had whenever I jump on the motorcycle, he would come in. I thought it was my ego at first. Um, it would come in and show I could feel it, um, recognize it, th this part of me. It would come in and it would show me visions of me tumbling across the highway and my daughter mourning me every time I went to get on my motorcycle. And finally, I was like, no, uh -uh, this, you know, I don't understand why this is. And so um, I talked to Brenda and we found that it was an aspect of me that carried that fear that carried that trauma and it was trying to very much influence me. So we cleared that, we integrated it, we brought it in and we brought in it as wisdom, not bringing in the trauma and the fear. We turned that to wisdom. So that is also what that cocoon space does for the aspects is that as you bring in everything that you are, and you allow that to come in, it changes it to wisdom and it shifts so much. That is huge with these coil pendants. Um, because to me, it, to me, it's just huge. It is bringing us as a multidimensional being more into the here now and into wisdom. Um, so then, we're going to step into what the next part of the, the, the true update. So all that stuff there we talked about in the last 50 questions Friday. The true updates to the quantum coil or the quantum heart coil is that healer aspect. Now, very interesting. It was on February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. I think it was. Maybe it was. Yeah, I think it was the day before Valentine's Day. Um, I... Uh, I was, you know, and I told you a little bit about this last 50 questions Friday, how um, during that well, it was actually during Valentine's Day that all these uh, synchronicities occurred and we ended up anchoring in that golden ball of light. So what this golden ball of light is that we anchored into these coil pendants and it's only in these coil pendants right now. Um, it is the personal healer, the golden healer. Now, Brenda talked about how she could do all of this phenomenal healing work and see instant shifts in people that were permanent and, and, you know, and see these miracles happen every day. But yet when you go to work on yourself, it, you, it, there, there's something there. You just, you, you're just not able to get as, that work done on yourself. It seems like I know a lot of healers who, who know this, it, it's tougher to work on yourself. Um, and it's not like working on your family. That's a different thing that has to do with emotional and connections, but working on yourself. So Brenda's like, why can't I do that for me? She created an aspect. She, her soul created an aspect. It is that golden ball of light, that personal healer, that golden healer. So this coil pendant, basically it has the patterns it has the blueprint for that soul aspect. So when you are tuning into this coil, 
you can tune into that golden ball. And last week, we also did on 50 Questions Friday, that golden ball meditation. You can go there to get that as well. Um, and again, that's towards the last of the video um, from last week, February 11th. So that's one place you can get that golden ball. But we have that in here. That blueprint, that pattern is in this coil. So then when your soul comes in, you just have the intention, and it can happen automatically because you have that intention anyway. When you put it on, if you know about it, um, because you'll read it on the website or right here. And so you know what it's going to do, and that's kind of your intention when you're putting it on to activate that healer. It can be that simple. So when you're there with it and you have that golden ball, um, on the website, on this product page, it does tell a little bit about how to utilize that golden healer, that personal healer. And it is, again, in that whole new paradigm of surrender and allowing and having the soul do the work. If you can visualize, what we do is we witness. We in, And this is just for those who can visualize. If, if you really feel you can't visualize, don't tell yourself you can't visualize, but um, just use your intention if you don't visualize, but don't tell yourself you can't. You, you, you should start visualizing. Imagination is huge in the work that you do through consciousness. So to work with this golden ball of light, this personal healer, this golden healer, it is as simple as once you have it there, um, step back and see yourself. See yourself as the human in the here now moment, standing there, this golden ball of light, asking your soul to come in, use that golden ball of light, and the soul uses the golden ball of light wherever it is that you need. Um, and you don't step in with your parameters that this is what needs to be and, and all of that. It's, again, the true magic and miracles take place when you surrender and allow because we are working in new spaces with new energies and we're working more closely to our soul, especially when we're in these fields. So just imagine that golden ball, your soul coming, using it, placing it, however it is, um, and just allow. That's simple. Um, anyway, Phenomenal, phenomenal pendant. We will have the silver on silver available. Um, the silver on silver, I think, are only like, I don't know, they're like eight or ten dollars more. Um, I'm not not certain, but the silver on silver will be available um, probably by tomorrow, uh, by Friday. <clears throat> so that's that's the plan is to have the silver silver um, ready and available. Now, we'll still have, I think we still have a few of the silver coppers, and we might still make some more of these. I think there's only a few left of the silver coppers, and I'm guessing we'll probably make a few more if, if people like them. I mean, we'll certainly make them. And then, of course, we have the copper coppers. Um, the, the silver silver isn't really much different from either of these other two. They're carrying the same energetic space. When Brenda and I first looked at the silver silver, we both were like, wow, that just feels softer. And it feels like it's because of that tube in there that is the silver, the sterling silver tube, and then the, the solid silver wire. But we felt that it was that silver tube um, that brought that softness to it. It's not like it diminishes its power or anything. It's just not as um, with these other tubes, it's almost like it is more crisp or rigid, crisp, crisp. Um, and so sorry that it's not a very good strip descriptor, soft, but truly um, energetically, they're all gonna be the same. So when you look at them, just feel into them. Feeling into something is simply going into your heart. Feeling into things is huge, you guys. You learn to feel into things. Go into your heart space. Imagine something there feel into it you're, you're not you're not looking for anything you're not um, trying really hard you're just in the heart space and you just feel practice that it's huge you can use that to feel into anything and you get a much truer definition of whatever it is if you feel into it 
that's your 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 wisdom your higher intuition all right so anyway that is the quantum heart coils freaking fantastic we are updating the energetic transformation kit with the copper with the copper with lanyard is going to replace the mini golden fire coil in our energetic transformation kit we have a new water ring um, that energetic transformation kit was going to come out next week and we're super excited about those because that has been needing an update for a long time um, and so now we'll have that updated and on the website here by next week um, and that'll be that energetic transformation kit beautiful package especially now that it's updated so anyway that's all i got there we'll go and see if we have any questions today um nika i love the meditation with the golden sphere made me so expansive and my crown was tingling big time is the golden sphere in the meditation you did related to the golden sphere in the quantum grid points and no actually that that golden sphere in the quantum grid points was um that one came from the heart of the earth you know there could there could be a connection there but it, it is a it is a different creation so that one that um showed up in the little grid points um that one showed up as basically that connector point to the heart of the earth is that golden sphere that's in those uh, in those quantum grid points uh cat can you cleanse the wisdom wand with salt vinegar solution i'm asking because the brass rod has patinaed yes so i know this is the one that i carried in my pocket it's the original one it's well it's hard to see here it looks dingier than it really is um <clears throat> but yes you can certainly do the same thing with the salt and vinegar solution so just use a salt and vinegar solution you can soak this you can use like a green scrub pad um you know like for for your dishes the the, the green scrub pads um, you can certainly just use that on there if you wish that'll take care of some of that patina um, and then when you go to dry out your any of your tools that have the tube on them be sure to rinse that well and then let it stand up to dry because then that is going to come out the tip of, of the tube so be sure to stand it to let it dry when when you are, are done rinsing it um, but yeah you can use that salt and vinegar solution uh, Kendall, are the quantum heart energies now also in the wisdom wand? They are not. Um, we we went through when we brought in that um, that golden ball, that that golden healer, that personal healer. Um, it we tried to put it in all the tools and it didn't go. But it is in all of the quantum heart coils. So all of the coils will have um this energetic even the ones that were you know that we made last week there um but but yeah the the energetics did not go into the wisdom wands do you have any information on how the quantum heart affects animals and pets that's a really a good question um we have not played with that concept yet but you know for the price on on these particular little coils and the size I'd almost say one of these would be a lot better than what we suggest for pets right now, which is a small infinity. The infinity is fantastic because the infinity is grounding, connecting heart to heart, the heart of the animal, excuse me, the heart of the animal to the heart of the earth. And so that's what the infinity is doing. And that's what we've always uh, recommended for, for household pets. Um, you know, we used to make them donate to no kill animal shelters, um, you know, cause it, it it's great for old dogs, young dogs, dogs in pain, and cats. But I really feel that these coil pendants are going to be better for pets. Um, you know, these coil pendants, a lot of work went into these to make them comfortable um, to where they don't freak people out. That is one of the biggest things right now that um, is going into um, some of these newer tools is... Um, you know, to allow them to be soft and gentle enough that it doesn't 
really freak people out. Um, well, this morning when I was working at that, it was like, well, you know, I was like, okay, and I don't want, you know, this particular coil to freak people out. And it was kind of like, well, let the soul be the judge of that, <laughs> you know, because some people might need a little freaked out. But, you know, and what I mean by that is, is there's been people that are, you know, really stuck in the the old ways of, of, of thought and that everything is out to get you and that this is not my energy, that I am a victim. Um, I'm a victim to all of the world. And um, and those are the type of, of perceptions that some of those folks, when they get with the wisdom tools, um, even the, the chalice energetics, yeah, the chalice energetics evens where it started, is that as it brings up things that are um, that we deny of ourselves, because we as a soul, um, you, you will run into that you have created some rather dark aspects. That's that aspect that I was telling you about that always brought that fear and trauma to me about the motorcycle. So those could be considered like a darker aspect. So there's been a lot of those folks who have that perception, you know, of, of the victim mentality um, in that nothing is my energy, nothing's my creation, um, that when they see something like that or feel something like that, that's a little bit darker and denser, they're like, uh-uh, no, no way. Your tools are full of all this dense, sticky energy. And... You know, and it's like, I'm sorry, but, you know, that is yours. It's, it, it's not, does not come from the tools. It comes from you. That's a hard one to explain to a lot of people. Um, and so <sighs> trying to set that into these coil pendants was the very first thing that I was wanting to work with so that it didn't freak people out in that way. Um, and so these coil pendants, I feel, are going to be for the mainstream as well as with animals. Because, again, this is one of the most phenomenal energies to date is, is this coil pendant. And so, um, yeah, it's going to be beneficial for the animals, kids, anybody, anybody. Is, is My intention is that anybody can muscle test, anybody can feel into it, and will feel that this is... A beneficial tool for them um, so let's see what else we have here Anika how far does the cocoon extend out will it affect those next to us um, no it will not encompass anybody next to you it's very much a personal because it is containing your light it is a very personal field with your light only um, but yet you affect those around you when you are more who you are. So you're going to affect you yourself are going to be that transformer and you're going to affect everybody around you. But the quantum, um, but the quantum heart coil will not affect those around. It's, it, it's going to be very much personal. Um, so anyway that is where we are at with that and um gosh if any of you do end up watching any of these on youtube would love to have you drop your comments on youtube too about any of the meditations there um we don't my, my niece amber takes care of all the youtubes and the transcriptions and the timestamps and all of that um so anyway um yeah she, she will she will okay your um, your messages and a lot of times we don't respond was the point of that was that you know we check YouTube once a week and and um, and we don't often respond there so if you're sending messages by through YouTube um, it's it's better on email but but please do if you do see something on YouTube and we'd love for you to leave a comment too because I was going to ask you guys for your comments and feedback on that golden ball from last week which somebody did give us a, a feedback on that and thank you very much for that um all right so it looks like we have some more questions here um let's see i'm just running over here to chat tab 
um, real fast. Okay, so yeah, we have uh, another question here from Katie. If we wanted to energetically restructure our EMF and water for a whole area and town, what tool would be the best? So for EMFs, the any um, for EMFs, the tensor field generator, the golden fire tensor field generators in whatever size, um, the two and a half is the most economical. They cover an area of about two and a half miles. So a golden fire generator would be a perfect one to have in your space to cover your entire neighborhood, um, two and a half mile in diameter. Now, as far as working with the water to restructure the water, the tensor field generator really isn't it. it the tensor field generator is not designed nor really capable to restructure the water in that field. You can put a generator right next to your water, you know, and it can do the restructuring then or on top or around. But just because this bottle of water is within this two and a half mile field doesn't necessarily mean that that water is going to be physically restructured. It will still bring an energetic to the water and that energetic will help the water release its memory, things like that. But in order for that field to get in there, you need a ring or a column of light to basically get in there and physically restructure that water because you have to work directly with it. Because again, a ring produces a column of light where generators and Gaia spheres are more of a sunshine. So they're not as a concentrated field as what the toroidal field of this ring is or of a column of light. So if you want to restructure water in the environment, there are some things that you can do. Some things that you can do are a quantum grid point. If you're working with a river or a lake um, or stream, pond, you can take a quantum grid point and you can throw it physically into the water. That is a simple, one of the simple ways to, to work with the water energetically. But truly the best way to energize environmental water is the columns of light. I know not everybody is into doing that style of consciousness work, but we have a lot of information, simple, easy, guided meditation processes. Light anchoring 3.0 is a good one. And you don't even have to buy tools for that. It teaches you how to actually anchor the light. So light anchoring 3.0 on YouTube is, is one of our better light anchoring procedures, but we have a lot of different videos and information out there on anchoring light, but really light columns, huge restructure, a lot of water with light columns. Um, yeah, and go over here to the questions tab. Um, Cheryl, I just listened to you on Awakening Code Radio and serendipitously found out about 30 questions Thursday. Well, welcome, Cheryl. I love the quantum heart coil and obviously the energetics to magnify your light. And I'm also curious, are those large flower of life mandalas hanging on the rack behind you? Oh, yeah. So this floor plate right here that hangs on the wall, the square floor plate that you see with the wand, that one was our original ascension chamber floor plate back in 2014, I believe. And then um, right here on the end of this one here, this giant flower of life here goes to this ascension chamber. Um, we make floor plates. The floor plates are spendy because, man, the floor plates are a whole lot of work. But that is the floor plate. And this one's pretty dingy and scratched up because this is the one that we take for shows. Um, and these things are like eight grand, though. Echopoxy floor plates are phenomenal. But, yeah, they are quite the task to create. Um, so, yeah, well, we, we, we like working with sacred geometry. Um, the flower of life is the 89 ring matrix with two circles around it. We see that it fits the five platonic solids. But when you take the two outer rings off of that flower of life and you allow it to expand to a fractal out, we use 127 ring matrix for our, for our fruit of life is what we call them, the fruit of life. So the fruit of life floor plates, um, 127 ring matrix. 
you can then fit in the platonic solids that are part of the building blocks of our higher density physical reality because there are more than five platonic solids but the five platonic solids fit within this bandwidth of frequency as we are stepping into higher bandwidths there are going to be more platonic solids that fit within the expanded version of the flower of life but don't fit within that flower of life version that's our take on the flower of life with the two rings around it that it was held to keep third density physical reality in place and now as it's expanding and fractaline higher density physical reality can then start to form that's my theory anyway um okay Ethan, i keep feeling that this pendant is the is to be worn by itself any comments on this true maybe so Ethan. um i tell you you know that i usually have tons of stuff on well i am keeping my things on my wrist because i'm doing a lot of work but yeah, I'm only drawn to wear this pendant right now. Um, and I wish I could sleep with it. I, For me, I can't sleep with necklaces. But if I could sleep with this or if I could put myself in a giant cocoon chamber, I would. Um, yeah, phenomenal energy. So being worn by itself, I'm not sure. Totally, you have to feel into that what is the best for you. But for me, yeah, it's totally just wearing this quantum heart coil um, pendant. It's been a beautiful piece. Do the wisdom wands carried in the pocket have an effect on others around? Um, that's a good question. So the wisdom wands to me do create a little bit of a larger field it's almost like their field is like six feet across is what it feels like to me um yeah i don't even carry my wisdom on in my pocket anymore this is the only thing i've been using um so to me the wisdom one you know if you carry it in your pocket it's it's only to me it feels like it's only affecting you know like a six foot across area so um you know, it, when you're just using it passively in that sense. And of course, you can intend to run energy to them. You could just imagine it being in your pocket running energy to the person because these quantum fields respond to consciousness. Um, so you can certainly have that intention, visualization, imagination of running of your wand that's in your pocket, running the energy to the person. It's just, you know do that kind of play it's pretty phenomenal when you play like that that's how we do our serious energy work <laughs> is playing like that um it has effects it's a beautiful thing um it allows you to stand more in your power once you realize how much you can affect the world around you katie how do we participate in the prototype program you have mentioned? Oh gosh, you know, Katie, we, we used to have the prototype subscription program and I see that it is still an active product on the website. We'll probably, we'll probably take that off of there. Um, there's, there is a few of you probably like, you know, less than a dozen people signed up for that um, subscription program. But what we have is we have the prototype page which has the tools that we would send out in that subscription anyway. And I know I said a week ago that I would put some new tools on there, which I have not. So it is going to be next week yet that I update the prototype products page. There are still some few things on there um, right now, but I will be doing some updates to that page soon. And then you'll be able to check out some of the prototype tools that we have because um, we have quite a few that just need to get listed some really heavy duty rings these um these smaller triquatros these smaller alchemist halos wrist size um and some heavy duty wrist size ones and, and some things like that that we have that we still need to get listed on that page so please do keep an eye out on that prototype um products page in there in another week there'll definitely be something there um all right so anyway yeah please do go back on the february 11th meditation um and again that's time stamped at the end of the youtube video for 50 questions friday for february 11th and we do that golden ball activation <clears throat> and um yeah so that's a place where you can find out more about that 
And otherwise, yeah, look for the Energetic Transformation Kit to be coming out next week. Um, the Energetic Transformation Kit has the coil pendant and it has a water ring that we made specifically for this kit that I'm calling the Alchemist Water Ring. Um, and we're still working on the energetics of it, but it will be completed by the time that comes around. Um, and then a two and a half inch golden fire generator is in there, a cell phone tab, and then also a plug-in disc for your electrical and a Wi-Fi ring. So it's a six piece package that has, um, you know, it, it's basically, it, it, it's a great kit. Um, so that one will be coming out next week and um, the silver should be available tomorrow or tonight. So you can keep an eye out for that silver, that silver on silver. <clears throat> so anyway, thank you all for being here today. And um, trying to think if there's any other cool announcements. Um, we're eventually going to make a light workers kit, which is going to be pretty fantastic. It'll include a wisdom wand, one of the coil pendants, a on the wings of talk and the alchemist halo to me those four tools for light workers is phenomenal and um yeah so I, I don't consider myself a light worker anymore because light work was always in duality where you're always fighting the dark to me, a light worker is someone who shines their own light, who anchors columns of light and just radiates without fighting in anything, without fighting the duality. Um, so that's my version of the light worker. But, you know, a lot of people still um, see themselves as light workers, and that's beautiful and fantastic. And so we will have a kit for all of those who like to go out and do the work, not only in the environment, but internally. So anyway, we'll have a light workers kit coming up at some point in time. And double checking over here on chat. Awesome. Thank you guys for all being here. And we will see you more than likely next Friday for 50 questions Friday. So um, yeah, just keep on being. See you soon. Take care. Now I'll see you soon. Take care.